Hi, this is Neil at Banana Computers. Thanks for joining us for another look at one of our systems. Today we're going to look at the R720XD uh, PowerEdge server from Dell. So today we're going to look at this R720XD 2U rack server from Dell. Uh, the XD stands for extra dense because of the additional loadout on the drives that they managed to fit into this chassis. You can get these with both 2.5 inch and 3.5 inch options. As you can see on the front here, this system's loaded with 24 600 gig SAS drives. I'll just have a look at one of those. These are hot plug, so you can take them out while the system's on, of course, and swap them over. And as you can see, this is 600 gig, and it's a 10K 6 gig a second SAS from Dell. You see, fully assembled. You saw how easy to go out. And they go in just as easily. And as you see, as you get nearer, click him into place and that's him done. The release is just on these buttons. And then looking at the rest of the front, as you can see here, there's the name, the brand of course of the system. We've got the power button just below it, which has a light that comes on of course. We've got the system identifier button, which is for those of you with, with several of these in racks, so you can identify on the back of the system quite easily which rack it's in and which server in which rack you need to work on. You can set the system identifier off and on the back of the system a little light will flash so that you can identify which server you're currently looking at or working on. And of course it has an NMI button for troubleshooting. It's like a, and also a diagnostic indicator lights up on the front here to give you readouts about the system in general. As you see, we have a fully populated set of 24 2.5 inch SAS drives on the front. And as you see on the right, we've got their lovely Xeon badge. We've got USB 2 slot and a VGA port there for connecting for the monitor. And that's the front. As you can see on the top, some basic data. Talks about the device's compliance, the configuration and layout, and of course how to do the hot plugs. And also a little reference to the system identifier lights that you can see that will come on the front relevant to what's going on with your system. And if we have a look along the sides, as you can see periodically, there are these little buttons which are actually the connectors for your rails for rack mounting the system. Obviously you can get static and sliding rails, but in this instance of this server, I very much recommend where possible get the sliding rails. It makes access and manipulating the server so much easier. As you can see, simple connectors on the top. Now, Now we'll take a look at the back. As you can see on the back on this one, we've got multiple empty PCI slots that match riser cards inside. As you can see on the back, as you can see on the back, we've got PCI slots, which at the moment are empty, but those are for your adding cards, should you require them. And run along the bottom. Again, we've got the system identifier button. This is the little button that will flash when you press the button on the front to try and determine which server you're looking at and want to work on. You've got your iDRAX 7 port there, of course. Should the license be purchased from Dell, that'll be active and you can do your access via that port. We've got good old school serial port connector and another VGA connector here. Next to those, we've got two more USB 2s. And as you can see on this one, this has got, I think on this one, it's a BCM 5720, which is a Broadcom 1 gig quad port NIC. And here we can see we've got two 750 watt power supplies. And they, of course, offer redundancy just in case you need to swap one out. They're both also hot plug and so come out as easily as that. As you can see, 750 watt. It's one of the 80 plus platinum range. And fitting them back in, it's just a click away. 
just above that we've got two slots which are for back mounted hard drive should you require them. Internally they also have to have the connectors inside. In this instance they're not active on this system and that's why we've got blanking plate fillers. And just above those we've got an SD card slot for the V-Flash media if required. You can put, I think they're 8 gig, they're usually using these, an 8 gig SD card. And that's the rear of the machine. One last look over it so we can see what we're getting. And don't forget an all important handle. Very, very useful. Brilliant addition. Now we're going to have a look inside of the system. To get in, there's a small lockable handle and as you can see in this case it's of course unlocked. And that just flicks up like that. And I'll just pan out a little bit so that we can see it in action. You lift the, the handle, flip the lever, as you can see the system comes away. And that can be removed very easily. And that gives us our first look at the internals of our system. So, looking at the insides, of course at the front, We've got all the board connectors, SAS connections, and all the cabling for the front panel, and all the drives that is needed at this end. Just behind those, we've got a series of hot plug fans. In this case, there are six. And they really are as simple to remove and replace as that. And next to those, we've got the shroud. which allows us to control the airflow within the system from the fans so that it runs across the processors and the memory which are all located under here. We'll have a look at that in just a moment. Next to that, hiding away in the bottom there, I've got a Perk H710P and that's your RAID controller card for configuring all your hard drives. Of course over here we've got some more system connectors and as you can see this here is the underside of the connector on the lid that locks it into place. And we can see here two, the two empty bays that you would use if you wanted back mounted hard drives. And of course, the SD card slot for the V-Flash should you require the V-Flash. And then last but not least over here, the key system components is the BCM5720, the quad port one gig NIC. That's uh, integrated, so you can see that it's on board. As we saw on the outside, four ports. Either side of that, we've got a PCI riser card here, PCI riser card here, and then we've got a riser slot here. And on this riser card, we've got a PCIe X16 for on CPU one. which we can nearly see and on the next card we've got two slots on this one and the first one is a PCIe X8 slot for CPU1 and the second one is a PCIe 16 for CPU2 and then in the third riser we actually have three slots all of them are PCI X8 for CPU2, and there are three of in there. And there you go, there's a, a full view of the inside of the machine. And here we are having a look at the internals. I'll just have a look under the shroud and see what's under there. This really is just a, fits into place nice and simply. I'm turning the camera that way so we can have a better look at it. And as you can see, populated with memory slots and two processors in this case. There are 12 memory slots per CPU, two CPU slots, and of course 24 memory slots in total. It gives you up to 768 gig in memory capacity, and of course two of the Xeon processors. In this instance, we've got two by the E5 2660 V2s. Very nice dual processing that. 
They're 25 megabyte smart cache processors, 64 bit. They have 10 cores, 20 threads, uh, 95 watts, and of course a turbo. The memory in this is uh, at the currently configured has 16 by 8 gig. So a total of 128 gig in memory, and these are 1866 megahertz RDIMMs. Of course, these can be configured differently, more memory added, and you can run on less memory or less CPUs, depending on which of our stock items that you were interested in. Replacing the shroud is no more simple than pop it back in place. As for putting the lid back on, you can pretty much do it even with one hand. Line him up and he just falls into place. Of course, everything's in line. So it's nothing more simple. You close that down. And as you can see, we have a sealed unit again. And that is a simple tour of the R720 XD. Last but not least for the included items, there's the accessory tray that you get as default in the servers. And as you can see in this one, it's got a bezel option. We have a, a few of the books relevant to the licensing. And of course, the very important installation DVD. It's basically, the Dell system management software, which when installed, you can access the server and manage things through your, uh, whichever Windows server version you're using. Last but not least in the accessory tray, is the two important rack power cards to make sure that you stay connected and powered up. Here we are, just a quick look at the packaging that comes with this. And in this case, of course, it's one of the sturdy Dell boxes with the special inserts so that the servers stay nice and safe inside. Thanks for joining me today for a look around our PowerEdge R720XD server and check out what deals we've got on offer on these servers on our website www.bananacomputers.com or see what other deals we have on offer that might be suitable for you. Thanks for joining me. Bye.